Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I just wanted to come out and share with you a revelation that I was given um, probably three or four days ago. And this is concerning the way that God loves us, all right? And I had been listening last week to John Fenn, Church Without Walls International, uh, his YouTube uh, video that he put out. And he was talking about Ephesians and uh, the book of Ephesians being packed full of the way God loves us, how he pours out blessings upon us. And uh, he was talking about just going through that, that uh, book and, and pulling out every time you see the word God, replacing it with Father and recognizing how much our Heavenly Father loves us. Jesus died for us. Uh, he went to the cross and paid for our sins. Uh, but sometimes I think we forget how good our Heavenly Father is and how much He loves us and what He has done for us. And so all of that to say, the book of Ephesians really does give us more insight into this. And uh, I wanted to just share a couple of the scriptures and then a conversation I had with the Father about these scriptures. And so uh, just a few things. Verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 1, Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. All right, chosen us inside of himself uh, for us to be holy and faultless by God love, meaning agape love, unconditional love. He made us highly favored among those now being made uh, God loving. Uh, so anyways, these are just a few examples of the things that the Father has done for us. So as I was contemplating these, and this is how I study uh, scriptures, I'll just take time to read a few verses and then just mull them over and think about them and maybe ask the Father something about them. So as I'm thinking about these scriptures, trying to discern more about how the Father loves us, I'm reminded of, I, I started thinking about my my one kitten. I have this kitten and he gets into things and he's he's naughty. And so one day I picked him up and I, I said, Asher, I said, I'm going to love you and kiss you so much that you're not even going to want to do anything naughty. And I thought of that and I said, um, is it like that, Father? I said, is that how, why you love us the way that you do? You just pour out this unconditional love upon us so that there's not going to be anything inside of us that is going to want to rebel against you in any way. And as I just sat there quietly, I heard in my spirit, no. And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, I haven't got it figured out yet. So then the Father in his graciousness begins to lead me in a, like a word picture to explain how he loves us and the purpose of his love. And he, it's like he begins to bring to mind a, uh, like a, a very narrow plank. All right. And if you're walking across a high narrow plank, and if you look down, you see a cushion here and a cushion there and a cushion all around that no matter where you might slip or fall, you would land on that cushion. It was like, then how afraid would you be to walk across that plank? Oh yeah, you really wouldn't be afraid if, if God's love is like a cushion around us to catch us if we fall. And then it hit me, the scripture, that perfect love casts out all fear. And then the Father is impressing in my spirit that the purpose of his love is not to coerce us into doing anything. The purpose of his love is to cause us to walk without fear, to walk without fear. Whereas I'm thinking in terms of, you know, my cat and loving him to the point where he won't want to do anything naughty. That's actually uh, the way the culture works with do good, get good, do bad, get bad. This is how we motivate our children. This is how the schools get them to perform. But that's not how it is in God's kingdom. It's not about our performance, because if it was, then Jesus would not have died while we were still in our sins. The Bible tells us that God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so it makes us really think more deeply about how we are loved and that it isn't intended to cause us to perform in any way but just to give us confidence and courage. And if you go to Joshua chapter one, verse nine, the Lord says, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee wherever soever thou goest. 
Now, anytime God gives us a command, it is uh, incumbent upon him to make a provision to enable us to carry out that command. So he's here commanding strength and courage. And how does he, what is the provision for us to walk this journey with the Lord without any fear? It's his love. It's his love. And if you listen to John Fenn's uh, video, I'm going to put a link in the description box to it. He, he goes over a visitation he had with Jesus where he explained to John that if you don't understand the parable of the sower, you won't understand anything. The reason uh, some of those seeds of truth that were planted couldn't take root was because there was no root in the person. All right, that soil in the person's heart, they had no root. And John goes on to explain that the root is love. They were not rooted in the Father's love. And that is why they, they could not grow. And so the more we're rooted in the Father's love, the more courageous and confident we will be in our walk with the Lord. Knowing that we are loved, knowing that no matter what direction we turn, if we lose our job, if we get a bad report from the doctor, if our spouse is in unfaithful, uh, if anything goes wrong in our lives, knowing that the Father is there to catch us, knowing that he is never going to forsake us, these are the things that will build that confidence in us and enable us to stay steady in our walk with the Lord. I was reminded of a time when uh, I was really struggling. My uh, kids were, we were having to drive them to a, a, a school that was a little further away from the, the local school. And uh, I'm working full time and just there's no margin in my life. And I was just feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I didn't feel like my husband was understanding. And so I have this dream. And in the dream, I am like literally just hanging onto a cliff with my, my fingers like this, just that, just hanging on, barely hanging on. And then all of a sudden I just fall and I, I couldn't hold on any longer. And suddenly out of nowhere, this lasso of light, like a light, ro a rope that's made of light, so just lassos me and takes me and puts me over on this solid ground, on this plateau. And I knew that that was the father catching me, taking care of me. And that's his love. And I just, I didn't understand how his love operated, but it was still operating in my life. And even though we may not understand the depths of his love for us, uh, it's still operating. But if we can grasp even a little bit of how safe he keeps us, of how we are protected and how we're guarded, I believe it will have that effect of driving out all fear in our lives of anything that might come our way. And that's what I'm hoping that you'll take away from this. Uh, and, and please, by all means, take this to the Lord in prayer. Ask him for a confirmation. And I encourage you to take time to read the book of Ephesians. Do your own study. Read eight, ten verses at a time and just mull them over and and just get that revelation of how much we are loved. And especially this week as we are focused on what the Lord Jesus did for us on the cross. Uh, and that he paid that price for a bunch of sinners. People who were not even uh, looking to him. People who were not even uh, repentant. And that speaks to his love for us. And so let's take time to focus on all these things, church. And, and just get grounded in the peace and the love of the Father and the Lord Jesus for us. And I believe that that will equip us in the days to come uh, to handle things in a place of peace and in a place of rest. I pray that you will all have a blessed Resurrection Sunday, a blessed Passover if you celebrate Passover uh, with family and friends. And as always, church, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.